7. The seeds of all things, begun from an eternal time, are composed out of the first bodies, or most simple principles, the four commonly received elements being neither simple nor sufficient. For in an infinity all things are infinite, nay, even eternal, as nothing could be made out of nothing, and therefore we may conclude that the organic structure of seeds could not be formed out of any concourse of atoms or any species of motion whatsoever. To illustrate this tenet by some example or other, the seed of a tree is not alone in power a tree, according to the notion of Aristotle, but a real tree in which are all the integrant parts of a tree, though so minute as not to be perceived by the senses without microscopes, and not even then, but in a very few things. All that this tree wants is a fuller distinction and magnitude of parts, which is gradually acquired by the application of simple bodies of distinct species, that are, as so many constituent parts, necessary to the nourishment and increase of that simple body. Therefore, no species of trees perishes inasmuch as the seeds in which it lives always remain alive, and should they be received in a proper place, forthwith they imbibe a more distinct conformation, nutrition, augmentation, and by degrees arrive at a due perfection. The same may be said of the other species of the universe, not only of animals and trees, but also of stones, minerals and metals, which are not less vegetable and organic, having their own seeds, formed in their own matrix, and increasing with a peculiar nutriment, as well as men, quadrupeds, reptiles, birds, fishes and plants. 8. Tis true, philosophers, for the most part, are of opinion that gold, crystal, etc., are similar, or bodies of like nature and parts, made up of an external apposition, or any other way, because they appeared so to the senses. But the pantheists think that they consist of dissimilar parts, from whose comprehension, this or that having the ascendant as a principle of composition, arises the body called homomerus. There is no such thing to be met with as a similar mixed body, no, not even in metals and stones, for chemists demonstrate that such bodies are cemented by a manifold growing together of several substances, for which reason, from gold, than which nothing seems to be more similar, they extract sulphur, quicksilver, earth, and other things that go to the composition of this noble metal, though not all things, as this would exceed the bounds of human industry. In stones and metals we may behold sundry shapes of veins, such as the shoots, as it were, of branches and roots, spread far and wide, which they have in their mines and quarries, from whence, to appropriate to myself the words of a certain philosopher, a friendly element gently filtrates, first through passages more lax, afterwards gradually through more narrow ones, to refine and make purer the nutriment, and finally an exhalation passes through thin and hidden pores. As the blood flows up and down and is driven to the extremities of the body, so in the nature of blood an elementary substance distills through the narrow holes of stones and metals, from whence each part, through its own conduit, sucks in what is befitting its nature. If such a nutritious sap is less perceptible in them than in the stomach and veins of animals, let him remember, who requires this from nature, that a distinct element from the parts does not appear more in trees, whose anatomy, notwithstanding, has been executed by several. If one should say that in plants there are certain figures of a trunk, branches, leaves, blossoms, fruit, seeds, so also in these all this may be found, either analogous or in a different manner. And as plants themselves shrub not after the same way, why then should we admire, if things propagated under the earth meet with a different kind of life? The man who at any time observed innumerable gems, beautifully distinguished by various figures, to grow in certain places, there is no reason he should believe they were less actuated